it's Thursday and welcome to Brave Beaters. I want to show you today the watch that impressed me the most in 2020 and believe me, I've seen quite a few pieces. So I'll introduce you to the Ball Engineer 3 Endurance 1917, a dressy tool watch with uncommon features and an amazing history behind. Curious to see it? Well, let's experience it together. The Ball Watch Company was founded in 4 minutes. On April 18, 1891, a conductor of a passenger train failed to stop at Kipton, Ohio depot, all because his watch stopped functioning for 4 minutes before restarting. And the passenger train that was moving from the west collided head-on with a mail train that was heading east. The Kipton accident is more than a footnote in the American Railroad history, and the 4 minutes delay appointed Webb C. Ball as a chief time inspector to investigate the accident's timekeeping issues. His work led to increased railroad watch performance and inspection standards, and this is how the commitment to accuracy was born for Ball. Today we are looking at a model that was literally born to pay homage to the heroic adventures of Sir Shackleton in the South Pole. With 28 courageous men joining his crew, the explorer set sail aboard his ship Endurance in October 1914. Their plan was to travel through South Pole. Yet, several months after departure, extreme conditions trapped the ship in ice, and the exploration turned into survival. Months on end, the crew lived on frozen sea. Shackleton embarked an 800-mile rescue mission to a whaling station, and after two years, all 28 men shocked the world with their return. So this is a limited edition Ball Engineer 3 Endurance 1917 that celebrates 100 years since the miracle occurred. And there is a book that tells the story of this adventure named Endurance, Shackleton Incredible Voyage. And as first impressions, this is a watch that literally confused me when I picked it up, because I knew too few about the brand, and when I experienced it, I realized that I literally knew too few about wristwatches in general. This is indeed a well-built piece and you can realize that from the first second. The weight is present on this watch, but very well distributed from the lugs to the center of the dial. And the case feels to be filled inside. And indeed is filled with goodies and exotic features that you definitely doubt to see too often on the vast majority of wristwatches. And as a watch profile, you might think this is a simpler, dressier piece. In fact, this happens due to the precious elements or the polished facets. But in reality, its purpose is to be worn as a daily outdoor beater, made for exploration and other activities. And believe me, it is tailored for such activities, being a mechanical combination of a G-Shock with a Garmin Phoenix. From the size perspective, this beauty measures 42mm in diameter with a lug to lug of 47mm, a height of 13 and a lug width of 21mm. We have an anti-reflective sapphire crystal, a beautiful blue dial with tritium tubes, an amazing mechanical thermometer, a screw down crown and a wall resistance of 100 meters. As for the movement, we have an in-house caliber RR1601, a cost certified movement that works very accurate on temperatures below minus 45 degrees Celsius or minus 49 degrees Fahrenheit, an anti-magnetic case and a shock resistance up to 5000 Gs. So what else can you desire from a wristwatch, but I suggest to go more in depth. The preview of the dial unveils us a beautiful sunburst in blue. The dial offers a contradiction between the elegance of the dial tones and the utilitary look of the tritium gas tubes. At 1 o'clock we have a beautiful rounded date that looks like a cyclops because of the highly polished inner ring that outlines the date spot. At 9 o'clock we have a subdial formed in concentric circles, that you might think this is a secondary time zone or a chronograph. No and no, this is a mechanical thermometer. And yes, you've heard me well, this watch has a thermometer that is pretty accurate, taking the ambiental temperature pretty good. Getting back to the loom chapter, the tritium gas tubes approach is part of the design language of the brand. If you are not familiar with tritium, this is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen and it was completely replaced in the years 2000 by the superluminova paint. The tritium replacing the radium, a highly radioactive paint that was used in the 50s. Now the tritium is fully visible and glowing for around 15 years and the only rule today is to use it in small applied containers as this ball engineer shows us because it's completely forbidden to be painted directly on dials. However, tritium is lesser visible during the night compared to the charred superluminova paint and I do apologize for not showing the luminescence of this beauty but apparently I deleted a part of these videos a few weeks ago and the loomed shots were there. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for future updates. Thank you. The polished hands are complementing the rectangular markers, succeeding to create a great symmetry inside of the dial. Again, the contradiction between elegance and utility is present here, 
The polished facets of the hands are combined with the tritium tubes and on the curved second hand we have a beautiful yellow accent that matches the handwritten amortizer font and the 12 o'clock marker. The case brings a bit of the overall vibe of the Rolex Explorer, but the Endurance 3 is better curved on the sides and on the end lugs, overall flowing better than the Oyster case. On the right hand side we have the signed crown with the old ball logo. The embossing is very well articulated on the case back as well, where we can spot the endurance ship that miraculously came back after two years in the South Pole. The bracelet as the case is made out of highly polished middle links and on the sides having a refined satin brush. The downside of the middle links is that it attracts quickly scratches, but overall I think this is an impressive bracelet that complements very well the case. And the piece of la resistance is the in-house movement automatic caliber RR1601 that works in cost tolerances. In fact, this is a very accurate watch. The movement using a special oil that endures temperatures of minus 45 degrees, plus the amortizer label from the subdial is a ball patented feature that protects the movement against shocks up to 5000 G. And as for how it wears, even though this is a 42mm case, I think it wears like a 40 or 41mm. The overall structure is eye-catching and extremely comfortable, having only a 47mm lug-to-lug and a low profile height of 30mm. And as final thoughts, this is a versatile watch that can replace a lot of watch profiles, as I said from G-Shocks to divers and dressy pieces. Definitely one of these engineers will be on my shortlist for 2021, but the important message is that Ball Engineer 3 Endurance 1917 qualifies as a brave beater taking the position number 22 because of the impressive technology applied on this watch and the impressive story that led to the commitment of making accurate tools for the safety of humanity. So this was indeed the watch that impressed me the most in 2020. I think this is a tool that can stand as a one-piece collection because it's durable, reliable and good-looking. But what do you think about this Ball 3 Engineer 1917 Endurance? Please let me know in the comments down below. And as usual, if you like the content of this channel, please consider subscribing for future updates. And until next time, be brave but stay safe.